We're trying to swap this Mark 7 GTI engine into an old Mark 3 Jetta to make a modern day Fast and the Furious car. In our last two episodes, we bought an old crusty Jetta and found this crashed Mark 7 GTI to be our donor car. We then took out all the wiring, control modules, and switches out of the car to figure out how to keep the engine running without them. Next up, we fabricated some engine mounts to get this engine dropped into a car it didn't belong in. With that completed, we were ready for our custom axles, intercooler, radiator, and Mark 7 intake into our Mark III. This is part three of our five episode series sponsored by our friends at Liquomoly and Unitronic. Doing a project like this is a massive undertaking and because Charles refuses to live in my closet, he can't be here for all the work. We need to make a custom downpipe for this car. But before doing that, we had to mount the DSG shifter in the car to make sure we had the clearance we need for the downpipe. To get this Mark 7 shifter box fitted, I started by trimming the shifter housing to fit inside the Mark 3 tunnel. I then marked the shifter housing mounting studs with paint to see where the holes need to be drilled. After installing the Mark 7 shifter box into the car, I quickly found out that it sat way too high in the center console. To fix this, we added standoffs to our shifter box to lower it down. This allowed our shifter to fit beautifully so we can move along with our project. In our earlier episodes, we showed this thing leaking oil everywhere. Now it's persistently leaked oil since then, which is why there's like a small puddle-ish on the ground still, even though I drained the oil out of this engine. So I'm putting a new pan on this thing because I'm sick of this. That was not very tight. Someone went a little crazy with this RTV. <laughs> you hear how it cracks loose? <laughs> that one didn't even crack loose. Oh Look at God. that. I haven't even hit it with the impact yet. No wonder it's <laughs> leaking everywhere. Hey guy, tighten the bolts. Hopefully you got a Nissan Altima after you got rid of this thing. He's gonna be doing a hundred on the highway. I drained the oil and, and it's been leaking for at least a month now. <laughs> and there's enough RTV on here to seal two oil pans. Oh, you're so tight. Step oil pan. <laughs> yep, got it. All right, so RTV'd it up and we're gonna put it up and actually tighten the bolts. And of course I cleaned up the mounting surface beautifully. Look at this, this oil pan is looking fresh and everything above it is looking pretty crusty and gross. Hello, hey, I'm here. I brought some tools. I'm just finishing up this oil pan install. Wow, that looks nice. Yeah, pretty good. You know what else I got done while you were gone? What else did you get done? Got the shifter done. Oh man, that, uh, that fits in there really nice. Why didn't you wait for me? That is because of this. Wow, that's quite the pipe. So we had to fabricate this downpipe without you. Uh, so we had to install the shifter first to make sure we didn't have clearance issues. Let me show you how we did that. So before we fabricate the downpipe for this, we gotta install a cap back so we know where it actually is gonna mount and come out. So the boys over at Tectonic were so kind to help us out with this cap back exhaust. We're planning on having a three inch downpipe. Ugh. Ugh. I think you have to always do the normal obligatory Yeah, this is a performance muffler. You see that car drifting on the front? Yeah. That Hellcat? Yeah, he's had a uh, street takeover. <laughs> Magnaflow. It's magnificent. Oh, you can't really hear when I'm talking to this. It really muffles my voice. This is the only sound baffling that's gonna exist within this vehicle. Oh, so God. prepare yourself for a loud <laughs> exhaust. <laughs> the only person who's gonna be wilding is gonna be our neighbors when they hear this thing. <laughs> They're gonna hate it. They're like, what is that piece of <laughs> And then we'll, we'll tell them the streets closed, pizza boy. That's what <laughs> So I bought one of these CTS downpipes, hoping that we could maybe modify this slightly to get a downpipe for this. We don't have a very good angle with this downpipe, so this needs to go come kind of straighter up like this, as opposed to forward like that. So this thing is basically useless for our purposes. So to fabricate our downpipe, we bought this V-band here, which goes to the turbo. We have this 180 here, 45 here, and a 90 there, and all of these pie cuts to get the adjustments we need. All right, so this 180 is where we're gonna start. So we need to get this turbo turned towards the other direction. So it comes out this way, we need to go that way. So we're gonna cut this. The 180 bend makes the initial turn we need. We then remove length from the pipe to get better clearance. When I'm fabricating a downpipe, because I don't know what I'm doing, there's a lot of testing and a lot of cutting involved. 
Uh, Steve is my replacement Charles, but Steve is also more talented when it comes to fabrication than Charles. So he's a bet, we'll call him better Charles today. <laughs> so you can see here, this is our downpipe we fabricated and there is our clearance there. It's actually pretty good. I'm really happy with that. We're not gonna weld anything until basically we've taped an entire downpipe together. So uh, this is arts and crafts. That's not bad, actually. Oh, uh, well, it is on top of the mount. That's a little bit of an issue right there. Ah, we can pull it up a little bit like that. So this is what we've done so far. There's our bend. And then we have all of our pie cuts here. Also, we made this handy dandy tool. We took some of this air pack, smushed it up so it was tight, and then wrapped it in tape, allowed it to give us some support so we could continue to kind of move these around. So inside of this tube, there is a bunch of taped up air pack pieces. And when we go in with this, it is tight. It's not, not tight. It's probably about right there. Uh, we've currently reached the limitations of what tape can do for us. So we're tacking all of these things in place. Uh, I'm, hold, I'm the holder. We are approaching a finished downpipe. This is our Mark III, Mark VII downpipe. It is fitted to the best of our ability. Uh, we have some really tight clearance spots, but everything clears, it's all tack welded, and now it just has to get finished. We're gonna have DSG parts in this car. Yep. <laughs> Like just like that. Now that we have this all tacked up, we're gonna go get it finished welded by somebody who's an actual professional welder. Man, that's uh, pretty good. And I, I think it's pretty obvious I would have been zero help. Probably only a little. Let's get this thing installed. That I can't help with. I don't think we're gonna be able to get it in here with this subframe in the way, man. Yeah, so serviceability <laughs> is a little bit of a problem and we are gonna have to drop this subframe down to actually install this in one piece. And it is probably gonna be like an insanely tight fit. This is essentially like this is where, where it, needs it to would be. need to be. Look at the top side. It's so far. It's like an inch off at the top. It's so far away. I'm gonna have to have the guys who actually can fabricate this come help us like get it properly welded in place. They told me that had we not tried to tack weld it and fabricate it ourselves, they could have done this with way less cuts and way less time. Unsurprisingly, involving our skills <laughs> in it, <laughs> it up. <laughs> because we have a lot of work left, we can't let the fitment issue get in the way. So we're moving on and we'll come back to the downpipe later. So we pulled a friend off the car to get the water pump replaced because it was damaged in the car accident. So Charles is working on just putting this together. This is actually perfect because if the water pump leaks in this car later, I can blame Charles for it. Hey Charles, do you want a wire brush to clean this? Mm. This is what I get. <laughs> <laughs> so when the water pump leaks, this is why. <laughs> you can blame me, but this, we all know. Okay, water pump's on. Now we gotta put our belt on and we're gonna roll this thing on like you used to roll your bike chain on when you were a kid. I'm rotating the engine around by the crankshaft. You're a genius. Nope. <laughs> if I were a genius, I would have said no when Paul asked me to do this. <laughs> no, go get a fresh <laughs> one. There's too much in the plug. Wait, hold on. Plug the hole first. When the project gets to be too much, that's what you need this for, is you just put it over your head and end it all. Paul and I have done some investigation on how we want to alter our cooling system because we're moving our coolant bottle from the passenger side like it is on the Mark 7 to the driver's side, which is how it is in the Mark III. That means we're gonna have to shift a bunch of stuff. So we're bringing some hoses, we're bringing some wire, we're bringing our brains, which is, that's not much left of that today. Uh, oh, Paul's hoboing it up. And a satchel of hose is to the parts store. We have a lot of hoses that we're looking for. The folks at the parts store were awesome enough to let us in the back room and check out the wall of hoses. To instead, well, this is the hose we need to replace, but to make a simple version of what we needed, we took this mechanics wire and we bent it. And I think we found a few things that'll work, 
but they'll probably take some modification. That's pretty close. That, it is pretty darn close. Dude, I think that's probably about as close as we're gonna get. We'll have to cut the end of it off, but that's all right. Pose, 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 pose. So here is our part store hose setup that we got. We have our upper radiator, which goes right there, just like that. We also have the two that we made for the heater core right back here. Now for the bottle on the Mark 7 is on the passenger side, Mark 3 is on the driver's side. So we have sort of a conglomeration long way home setup for now because somebody whose name rhymes with Schmall forgot to order some T fittings and a hose for the lower portion of this. For now, it's gonna look like this. Soon it will be over here <laughs> on this side. And then we have this piece, which is a super important piece. It goes in the lower radiator hose. So this is for our coolant temp sensor. I did a lot of digging to try to find this thing. The reason why this is a big deal is this took a very long time for me to find. Most coolant temp sensors on Volkswagen Audis are either in coolant flanges or in different fittings like this that attach to uh, radiators directly. This is not something that's just laying around for, for swap people. We will link to this so you can have one of these. They're not, they're like 10 bucks or something like that. Uh, in the description where you can find one for your swap build. We cut this hose so we can get that fitted in there and then you can drop your coolant temp sensor in place. We're gonna get some decent clamps once we get the final version of this stuff here, but that would go in there just like that. So as you can see, a lot of our cooling system is actually set and ready to go. This is another one of those pretty big milestones to have happen. Uh, well, anyway, once Paul gets the other stuff that he forgot to order. Now is the time. I know this says rain X on it, but, <laughs> but it's just water. Trust, trust, trust me, bro. Uh, we're filling the cooling system with our makeshift. That's what I was listening for. That's what I was listening for. Where is it leaking from? Is that the water pump? I don't know. It might be. Remember what I told you about Charles and the God water pump? The water pump leaks in this car later. I can blame Charles for it. Well, it's just a coolant hose that's just not on. It's just, it's just <laughs> not even connected at all. But this is what happens when you have a car apart for months. Uh, round two. I believe we're hooked up all the way now. We're going to find out the next thing we didn't put on. A new drippy? Well, it's the same area. Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, the water pump union is leaking. This is what happens if... You let Charles <laughs> What? Remember when I said I, it's Charles' fault if it's leaking? And Charles is eating a burrito, a spicy burrito. It was a long time ago. We're gonna look, we're gonna we're gonna blame it on past Charles. That's a spicy Charles. <laughs> now we have our fuel pump. So to make this fuel pump work, we need to put the guts of a Mark 7 fuel pump inside of a Mark III fuel pump. The reason why we need to retrofit a GTI fuel pump is that the Mark 7 ECM needs the fuel pump module from the Mark 7 to properly control fueling in the car. I have ordered a CTS upgrade kit, which is intended to be installed in a Mark 7 pump, mostly so we don't have to stink like gas. And then we're gonna try to take apart this aftermarket one and hopefully we can swap it into it. The Mark III pump, when you turn the key on and start the car, it's on all the time until you turn the car off. With the Mark 7, it's called a pulse width modulated pump, which basically means the computer turns it on and off really, really fast. That's what the ECM of the Mark 7 engine is looking for and also the signal that it's sending out. So we need to turn this pump, instead of just being on all the time, into a pulse width modulated pump. We actually don't even know if this is actually comes apart. So that's gonna be real neat to figure out. Oh yeah, that I bought this one specifically because it looked like this and I was right. This is called a fuel bowl. So this is almost always full of fuel. That way when you turn a corner or go up a hill, you don't have a fuel starvation issue. So we're gonna do this in a nice, neat and organized fashion. The goal is for us to swap this piece into this. Do you have done. another pocket screwdriver? I have so many. You got a pocket screwdriver? He's like, I got so many. Turns out I have, I have that no, was a lie. I have none. <laughs> I'm I'm on the path though. My idea works. Here, let me. Why don't I Be I push and you? Cross. Because I'm I don't want you. I don't want to poke you. Ooh, is that it? <gasps> it was it. Okay. Okay. So now we have to. There. Now we got to be careful. Okay. I feel like we should heat that up. 
I'm worried that we're just not gonna be able to get it back. <laughs> I'm afraid you're gonna crack it. Um. So right now he's grinding that hole out so that we can fit this guy, boop, right inside of there. So this is the moment of truth, or at least we think so. This housing, I'm gonna be heating up with the seat gun. Charles put the pump in the freezer last night. So we are going to try to heat this up to allow it to expand, drop that frozen pump in there, to make our fuel pump work. If this is successful, I'm really excited about this. I'm also very nervous that it's gonna get stuck in the middle of this and we're gonna end up breaking this thing and then we'll have to buy another fuel pump and try again. And Paul's a lot more worried about it than I am. But also, if the pump breaks, Paul has to buy the yeah. pump me, so I really have no skin in the game here. Oh, come, come on, let's go. Okay. <laughs> Here's also the work freezer for something. Some hot pockets and 8,000 things of ice. All right, here it is. Look at frosty goodness. Why you is can there so much ice in it? <laughs> Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> That's as far as it's going. That's what I was afraid of. That's what he was afraid of. Worse. No, it's, it's going. I think that's seated. That's real that's close really if it's good. not. To spread the bottom part. Yeah. Like, see how tapered, can you see how tapered that is, Nathan? It looks like you like shoved it, it in there. I did. Uh, yeah, he, he rammed her home. Okay, <laughs> I'm, a little, gonna I'm a little worried now while we have the opportunity, let's get the orientation vertically. He hates me. We're rushing because it's still malleable. We're rushing a little bit because it's still malleable. Dude, I think that's, I think that's golden that right is, there, buddy. That is sweet. That, I'll actually link to the one that I purchased so that if you want to do this, you can do it. Fair warning, we had to grind out quite a bit out of this housing and it's still like it's, snug. Yeah, it's snug. Mark 7s do not have a fuel return. Most older cars do where the amount of fuel that exceeds the needed mount for the engine gets returned back to the tank. So there, this would be a return on the tank and it would flow back into this fuel pump. Problem is we don't have that. So we're leaving this hose here and we're just gonna cap it off here on this top side to make sure we don't have fuel vapors running inside the car. There it is. There it is. Look at the excitement on this man's face. We're ready it's to go in. High. Poop. We are hoping to have this car started today. That's the goal. We have two major issues. One of them, downpipe. Two of them is now a massive coolant leak. <laughs> but we still need to kind of put it on in order to get the car fired up. So what we're gonna do is put it on like this. All right, stage five, oh. super intake. That's how you know you got a fast car right there. Uh, I think we should just leave it like this. Guess what guys, the exhaust has been fabricated. This is the kind of level of fabrication you can expect from Paul and I. Do you see what happens when I, when I was involved with fabricating a downpipe? This is the only way you can use it. You blow the exhaust out and then you suck it right back in. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is an emissions control device right here. Yeah. We're, we're removing the rear seats. To get to the trunk where the fuel pump is. It smells back here. I told you. Here, I got it, I got it. All this is trash. Yeah. Oh, you're going to dust the up. Ugh. Because this car stinks right here. Stinks. Stinks. That's the way. Hang on, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. This is, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay. Ow, is that? Ow, oh, sorry. Ow, ow, ow. Dude. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know you are jamming. Okay. There we go. God, it's so dusty and disgusting. This is gonna be a race car. It looks like um, this trunk is full of uh, uh, Ginger's pubic hair. Yeah, it's got a lot of cooties. <laughs> Here's a new rogue ignition switch. We did, that's what they did. This is the typical, this car had a starting problem. So what they did is they just keep putting ignition switches in and then they, they keep not fixing it. So they keep convincing themselves that it was a bad ignition switch, and then eventually just decided to wire a button around it. They wired it so that it was essentially hot wired all the time. They had surrendered after probably three or four ignition switches. It's pretty stupid is what it is. Oh, oh we need to vacuum that out yeah. we, I got a vacuum before right there. We, <laughs> oh, look, it's yeah. had some kind oh, it's of- Oh, it's got nuts on there. Jank repair. Look at no clamps on no, the fuel pump. No clamps it's, in the hoses. As I've talked about in the past, this is the special tool you use for taking out fuel pumps. 
a hammer and a screwdriver. Also, our fuel pump has no clamps on it. These lines are just hold on with hopes and dreams. Uh, this one is the return. As we mentioned before, we won't be making any returns on this one. When you buy a car like this, you're lucky if it returns back anywhere. Oh yeah. It does smell kind of turpentine in this gas tank. This is why we didn't try to modify this pump. Look at that guy. Pretty good. That warble's that warble's pretty good. And ours, I think we did a better job. Ours, well, if you look, there's a bushing, like kind of a seal yeah. bushing in there. That <laughs> there is just was like, a bushing in there. <laughs> this is white, and when they get old, they turn brown. This is kind of more, I would call this like pumpkin? Yeah, maybe a burnt orange. Burnt orange would be a good, one, a good description as well. Uh, as you can see, it is old. It is quite decrepit. Oof. So we're gonna kind of wipe out this gas tank from rubbing it around. This was a clean rag just a moment ago. It is a unclean rag now. It's years of gunk and sediment that are in the tank, so I'm just cleaning her up. All right, we're going in with this fuel pump. Nathan's making me do it from the trunk so he can show you. So here we are. You ever, you ever have a friend die in a free gasoline fight? At a gas station? <laughs> First, I'm gonna just give it a little tug. Oh yeah, she's, she's in there. It's not coming, that's not going anywhere. I got some real crusty looking wires, so. So basically what we gotta do is I gotta check on the wiring diagram and see of these wires, which one of these is the correct one for the fuel level sending unit because we are leaving those and which ones are for the fuel pump because we're swapping those out. After finishing our install, we wired our Mark 7 fuel pump module to our new fuel pump to prepare our car for first start. Now we're ready to put some oil in this car and you know what kind of oil we're using. Bam, liquid volley. This sticker is dangerous and inconvenient, but I sure do love my look of my oil. Clearly, a job like this is a ton of work and a ton of time. To help us out with that, we partnered with Lookamali on this whole project. Back when we pulled the engine, we drained the transmission fluid, so we're gonna be doing a DSG service with Lookamali DSG fluid. And because we drained the oil and replaced the pan, we're gonna be filling this up with Lookamali oil and doing some of their other services as well. So Paul, where can our friends at home find these Lookamali products? Well, it's funny you ask that, Charles. You can find Look Molly products at shopdap.com where you can purchase them, have them shipped out, and then receive them at your home. I think on the first time, Paul, it makes sense to just fill the engine and shake the car down. Then we'll come back and do things like an engine oil flush, and on that final fill, we'll add our Ceratec, which is the same thing I use in all of my stuff. Look at how high I can pour this without spilling it. When we first got this car, we drained out all the trans fluid. Now we gotta get filled back up. So we're gonna be using Locomale DSG oil. We also have our fluid pump here, which you can fill this a variety of ways. This is by far the fastest and easiest. Yeah, we made a DSG video with Charles like eight years ago. Go watch it, it's garbage. It is such a bad <laughs> video. Yeah, then we made a much better one and people liked it a lot more. Normally, the process for this we have in that video I mentioned, that doesn't suck. You would actually run your engine to properly set this level. We don't have that option. So we're just gonna ram in about five liters of this <laughs> and we'll figure it out later. We never go in dry, that's the rule. Except that one time you did. Watch the bubbles. There you go, see that one? Mm -hmm. Gone, magic. <laughs> see that bubble right there? Mm -hmm. Gone. <laughs> Meet me at the club, this fluid level's going so down. In the background is a Lickamali flag and a German flag. Ooh, and that, the German flag was, was put up backwards and people comment <laughs> yeah. all the time people. about it. Two years people have been commenting about that, maybe longer, but guess what? I'm not turning it around. <laughs> stand, stand by your man, Paul. Yeah. So you know how hard it was to get it up there? Yeah. Somebody else did it. That's how hard it was. It was me. <laughs> Am I going to get back up there and do it? Absolutely no. not. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Week? No, but it's already, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Oh my God, it's coming. Oh. <laughs> Good. Uh, sorry, That's Nathan. why you pump a little extra in there. Sorry, Nathan. I didn't mean to throw that in your general direction. So Charles is here with the harness. This is the final. It's the final harness. Do -do -do -do. Do -do 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 -do. Okay. So this, as you can see, is an absolute mess. He is gonna be trying to untangle and get rid of like, for example, this little octopi. This is an octopus of wires. But there's other octopi. Octopuses. That look similar to that, that are just now two wires joined together. So here's a good example. We have all this nonsense with just one ground. 
So I'm just gonna cut this, splice it together. When we take this over to the engine compartment, we can cleanly lay it out and see what do we need to extend? What do we need to shorten? How are we gonna wrap and wrap this harness? This is the fuse box that'll be like on your side of your dash. So we have six wires in here. So these six wires that are going, that are in here are gonna be removed from here and moved to this fuse box, which would be underneath the, in your, it's in the engine compartment. In the engine compartment, sorry. <laughs> words, words are hard, words yeah. are hard, guys. He learned English once yeah. and he forgot it. And this is also why wires are uh, small strand, not solid core, because they're meant to flex and move. That's also why Volkswagen doesn't use solders or recommend solders for repairs, because that True. creates a rigid environment in a place where you need. I'm so rigid. Flex. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm in here and I went to get a light because I'm, I'm gonna start looking at the, the drive-by wire pedal mount. Paul's just casually got razor blades chilling down here on the floor. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you just lay down in there and, and find that out. Slice my arm open. Listen, they have to be easily accessible. That way, if things go wrong, you can just quickly end it all. Plus, it's kind of like, if you can survive working on a car with Paul, you can survive anything. <laughs> this is how far we've come. Mark three pedal. Mark seven pedal. So the pedal pivots like this, right? So it's like this, you mash, this pulls the throttle open. Well, this bolts to the place where this pivots on, which is kind of cool. And then this guy swoops in like that. This pedal bracket is from our friends at Fabless and luckily they had this product. So instead of fabbing less, we had to fab none because I'm lazy and I didn't want to do it. All right, we got oil. Ah, uh, we got DSG. The car hasn't caught on fire yet. It's not. It doesn't have any power yet. That's why it hasn't caught on fire. <laughs> yet. That's why it hasn't caught on fire. <laughs> Charles finished up some wiring out here. Uh, got the butt connectors done. Uh, I finished up the fuel pump inside the car. Fuel sending units actually Mark three, so that's all staying in place. We have grounded a bunch of junk out, which is why there's just a smattering of wiring and all kinds of junk there. Yeah, ignore that. Don't worry about that. It's not gonna stay like that for more than a few a years. years. <laughs> we, we think we're about to start this with the actual key. So I'm gonna hook up the battery. I also bypassed the alarm module, which is one of the issues this car probably had early on. I heard okay. something click. Right now, the battery has power. I got some hazards clicking. That makes sense. <laughs> Tell me when you're ready. Try it. Here we go. Do you have the battery loose in case you need to yank that off there yep. after it runs? All right, here we go. Nothing. Am I shocked to find out that nothing happened? <laughs> Definitely not. Okay, honey. <laughs> Three, two, one, crank. Nothing. So yesterday we had a lot of problems with the wiring. We have now reconvened. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna try and start the engine in the car as it sits here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna separate our Mark III wiring from our Mark VII wiring to allow us to figure out, do we have a problem here? Do we have a problem with the Mark III or is it our brain wirings, which is probably what happened. Never rush wiring, kids, it's a bad choice. That's good. That's, that's a wake up noise. Hey! Okay. Oh, hold on. <laughs> this, uh, right? this one came off. Round two. So our car wouldn't start again. So come back on our next episode to see what we did wrong and maybe you can see this engine run. Once again, big thanks to our main sponsors, Liquid Molly and Unitronic. Also, thank you to everyone else listed here who has contributed to this project in some way. And if you want our shop dap repair to build you one of these things, you can absolutely forget about it. They specialize in Volkswagen Audi repair, maintenance, diagnostic, and performance, and they are not gonna build you a car like this one.